we are going to highlight HydroPoint theme and the Water Compass project. So um, we have special guests, Ben Slick and David Taylor, who instead of going to the uh, standard resource for pictures that I call LinkedIn, uh, I went into my personal file and found some of my favorite pictures of my friends, Ben Slick and David Taylor. Ben Slick is somebody who very regularly beats me at pool when we get together. So I thought that this was an appropriate shot from behind the back. And then David Taylor and I did a project in DC and, and had the time to sneak out and see some of the monuments together. And I thought here on inauguration day, this was a particularly appropriate photo to highlight David. So thank you fellas. Um, for joining us today. So let me kick this off with just talking to you. Um, stop share, bring you back. Ben Slick, hello. How are you, Ben? Thanks for letting me be part of this. Um, we miss your weekly attendance in this, but we struggle on without you. Um, it is good to have you back. And David, are you there? David's on mute. Yes, Ben, thank you for having me as well. No problem. Thank you for making time. And thank you for the last minute uh, adjustment to both of your schedules and for, for being here. Um, we definitely want to just get into the content here. Um, and when we talk about Water Compass, the big thing that Water Compass provides is a solution to water blindness. Um, water Compass is a solution that HydroPoint provides where um, we can listen to your water meters and put on a dashboard real-time water information. So our customers can eliminate this water blindness and this lack of real-time visibility into their water costs. Um, which, as you'll see from some of the stories that we get to tell today, um, can be uh, hugely beneficial, not only to the water bill, but to productivity and to infrastructure of the site. So we will um, get into that as part of what HydroPoint is dedicated themselves to is really water management technology. We call that 360, 360 degree smart water management, where we have three different technologies we take to market. Uh, every week we talk about the weather track, and I'm sure you're familiar with that. We also have another smart controller or smart irrigation product we call Baseline. And then Water Compass is um, really focused our entrance into indoor water management. Um, anything you fellas want to build on on that slide right there, Ben Slick? Well, as people know, in both the Weather Track and the Baseline product lines, um, we have a full range of flow sensing technologies, traditional irrigation flow, where you intrusively cut into a pipe monitor flow through the irrigation system, run wires back to the controller to then feed those signals and the controller then totalizes and then captures flow information, alerts, alarms on anomalous conditions, provides shutoff to a master valve. And those are the traditional ways irrigation flow is managed. M many of our uh, customers decide to put in irrigation control and don't put in traditional irrigation flow either due to cost or to to site disruption or you know, just the incompatibility of a site uh, where there's oceans of asphalt or there's no host valve to use to flow link. And so water compass can be used in another way in the irrigation world of literally sitting on an irrigation water meter and providing a flow solution that delivers visibility and alarm capability. It lacks the ability to perform a shutoff, but it does give a customer the ability to know if they've got water running at 10 in the morning, for example, and it shouldn't be, or if they've got a high flow condition based on the patterns we set. So it's a definite uh, thing to consider for irrigation. Um, but, you know, because we've done so much work with our customers on flow, they started asking us questions about, well, we have other water sources on our campus. We have domestic meters, we have, you know, cooling towers with makeup lines, we have steam heat with fill valves for boilers, we have water fountains, we have 
cafeterias, we have laundry facilities, we have workout facilities, you know, all these things are sub consumers of water behind our domestic line. What can you do to help us figure out if we've got any kind of anomalous use on our commercial meter, as opposed to our irrigation meter. And that is sort of what the real drive behind the water compass offering has been. Absolutely. And with the water compass device, uh, I think of it as a stethoscope for your water meter. What we do is in a non-intrusive way, we attach a, a sensor to your water line or your water meter that allows us without cutting into that pipe to see what the water is doing inside the pipe and then deliver it to the dashboard where it can be viewed in real time. So instead of waiting for that water bill to find out that there's a break or a leak somewhere and, and it's already cost you thousands of dollars, we can proactively manage against these types of things and see in real time, in fact, set tolerances of acceptable use and alarm if we exceed those tolerances, right? Absolutely. David Taylor, anything to build on that? Oh. Well, I think both uh, Ben and Ben have made excellent points. It's a non-intrusive installation process, so we never cut into the pipe. We never shut off the water when completing the installation. Sorry, I'm looking for what you're talking about. Keep going. Oh. We, we may have an internet hiccup on his end. Um, yep. I'll pick no this problem. up. So again, the water compass solution is non-intrusive um, and it's a solution delivered in three parts. There's a physical hardware device that will either attach to a water agency meter and read it. It's non-intrusive. It's basically reading the magnet of the water meter or it's reading the pulse outputs if it's a digital meter. It then has its own battery and its own storage and its own modem communication technology. And it's in a watertight case, so it can be located in a meter vault without the need for a power source. And then once a night after it's collected all the meter readings of the day, it batches the communication up to a cloud-based application called watercompass.net, where then a user with the proper permissions can see a single meter or all the meters at a certain building or all the meters across the fleet of property that they're responsible for managing. And what then happens is the analytic dashboard gives a view into water used by month or by week or by day. And most importantly, even by hour of day, which then gives the customer the ability to try to track usage across a 24 hour pattern. And in that case of irrigation, for example, if you see water running outside of a defined water window, why have I always got water running continuously? Why is there always hundred gallons an hour running on my irrigation meter? something's broken, something is stuck. So it gives them much more visibility than if they were just waiting each month for their water bill to arrive, then you know they can instantly know where they are. And it's really a, a tracking tool. It's a baseline and measuring tool. It can be used in measurement and verification for other water efficiency projects. So for example, if a customer is wrenching in new toilets and they wanna track the pre, baseline and then track the effectiveness of that measure post uh, the new porcelain, <clears throat> you can literally see it happen on the dashboard each day as the installations are complete in real time and see the water use reductions occur. So it's a, it's a baselining tool, it's a monitoring tool, it's an analytics tool, and the whole point of it is to put data into the hands of customers who use that data to then make informed decisions about managing their water use and in the end, it's about delivering an outcome to our customer who wants better visibility and to eliminate their water blindness. That's awesome. Great synopsis. Um, Scott Hunt has a question that I'd like to bounce off you, Ben Slick. He says, if Water Compass has the ability to alarm, will it alert a user via text or email like the alarms on WeatherTrack, <clears throat> WeatherTrack Mobile and WeatherTrack Central? Um, like, can you set tolerances or learn flow on this device. That's one of the key benefits of the product is that even though we batch the data once a night to the cloud, and we do that because we want to preserve the battery life of the device, we could transmit more frequently, but it would just erode battery life. We do have the ability to set thresholds because there's logic on the USB stick in the device that holds the data. And we can program in time of day thresholds or high use thresholds 
So if you wanted to say, send me an alert, if I see water running at 10 in the morning or at three in the morning, or if I, if I see water running above 10 gallons an hour, because that's the base of what I think my ice maker is doing in my building, you know, and I know that's consuming that much water, anything over 10 gallons an hour should be alerted to me. Those alerts can be delivered via email in real time and soon they'll be delivered via SMS text messages as well. That is awesome. And I, I just wanna drill into that a little bit farther by looking at this, um, the demo site. Uh, we have, um, <clears throat> if I can share my screen here appropriately, um, we have I have loaded up the water compass demo here. Um, this is <clears throat> what an example. This is a weather track or the Hydropoint company headquarters, as I understand it. So this is just a sales demo that we can play with. But um, the information is delivered in a really compelling way. So on top of the alert notifications, if you really want to drill down on your water use, we can see anomalous behavior. We can look at the total usage by month or by day and, and see exactly what that meter is doing and find where issues might exist. On top of that, what I really like is when it is presented in this heat map sort of feel. We call this the heat map that highlights exactly how and when water is being used. So this dark, the darker the blue, the higher the consumption that we mm -hmm. see. And a lot of water conservation in my experience is not infrastructure damage, but just understanding our current water use. Like um, Ben Slick has a great story about one of our customers who runs a retail site and was comparing site to site and finding significant differences in their two water bills. And then they use this heat map to figure out exactly what was happening. Can you explain that for us, Ben? Yeah, in the case of shopping centers, um, when you've got a three-story mall, you know that imagine how much water could be consumed in that through a dedicated irrigation meter for sure. But then if you've got domestic meters feeding the east part of the campus or the campus and the west part of the campus, and then how do you dive, dive in to know? You know how much water is running in that center at three in the morning when there is no occupant and when the cleaning crews are gone and then what would the signatures look like um one of the things we helped that customer do in particular that ben's referencing is we had them go into their food courts and we were seeing really high unexpected use you know based on the kind of tenants that were in food courts i mean a, a starbucks uses a certain amount of water a mcdonald's uses a certain amount of water but what they found is there was a frozen yogurt shop that had eight machines that made the yogurt that were cooled and chilled with water. And the water ran continuously at the tune of 600 gallons an hour. Um, so it wasn't necessarily anomalous use. It was part of the way the machine was designed, but they never anticipated that when they rented that space to that yogurt shop. And so they were literally losing money on that lease as that utility expense outweighed their rent expense. And so they were able to understand that make future rent adjustments and you know just better understand and how to comprehend their expenses so you know there's lots of ways what's important to know about water compass is it's not just a technology solution that is set and forgotten but rather behind it we have a team of analysts that look at our customers they get a dedicated customer success specialist and their job is to monitor alerts that are delivered to the customer and follow up on those with either email or a phone call so that if an alert went accidentally to spam or was below the threshold of all the other rattle and hum of the day that that guy at that center was managing in his mall, you know, to call them out and say, hey, you know, we noticed a, a big change in use. Uh, is that an authorized change? Do you know about that? And the guy might say, yeah, hey, we were water brooming a patio at, at an advance of an event. Thanks for noticing that was an authorized use case or, uh, no, that, that, that's not authorized use. Let's figure that out together. So there's, there's humans doing not only the monitoring, but also helping with the forensics to help our customers ultimately resolve anomalous use cases. Yeah, and I think that that's a, a, a huge part of the discussion, right? Is we are viewing this as a partnership and we are trying to deliver the outcome um, far beyond the, the technology itself. We are focused on 
actually the the goals of our customers with this and um it's not just here you go good luck uh it really is a a, a path that we walk together and use the information provided by our technology to really have an eagle eye view of the water consumption and, and really drive at understanding uh, understanding the water usage, eliminating water blindness, and, and using that information in a proactive way. Uh, another thing I wanted to highlight here, and David, uh, if you want to take me off mute, this is something that we talked about pre-show. Um, let me go back and share this. <clears throat> if I go back to my heat map, um, one of the things that David wanted to highlight, if, if we still have him, um, was the, the use case, right, where we can see all of this activity. We can understand how we're using that um, and in a real easy way to see and digest. But the other thing that he likes to highlight is this zero measurement, right? When the meter goes to zero, that's a good thing. One of the alerts that we have is watching if your meter never goes to zero. That means that there's some sort of constant leak um, and, and a huge issue, right? If toilets are running all the time or ice cream makers, as the case may be, um, we're, we're never gonna see that meter go to zero. It's never gonna stop ticking those gallons away. And so this low use case is just as important as this high use case. Um, to really understanding the full picture of water consumption on that site. And the customers have the ability to work with our customer success team to adjust the thresholds where alerts are generated. So we might set the threshold low to begin. And then once we start learning the patterns of the account, the site, the meter, we might then upwardly adjust once they acknowledge that, hey, that is a nice maker, that is a cleaning crew, that is, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, there's refrigeration equipment that's running that is using water to make, you know, whatever. So it's, you, you have the ability to upward adjust your thresholds so that you don't get false positives. And in the end, what you're doing is you're dialing into being alarmed on when you have truly anomalous use. And then one of the, the big highlight stories that I like to, that comes to mind when we tell water compass stories was uh, with a branch of the churches that we, uh, are partnered with in their initial deployment of Water Compass, like what was it, two weeks after they put Water Compass on a building, uh, they detected a major break, right, that uh, happened in the basement of one of their facilities that nobody was going to be at for the rest of the week. It happened on a Monday night and nobody was set to even be in that building for a week. You know the details of that story? I, I don't, um, but you know, the fact that it was alerted to a facilities maintenance person and that they were able to go and physically inspect that and find and fix the break, save them damage, um, save them you know, business interruption to the, the facility. Yes. And uh, present it for a long-term mold damage you know, from a an event that might not have otherwise been caught. Right, and, and water's a, a dangerous problem to have because not only does it cost you money, but the, to your point, Ben, it shuts the whole facility down. It disrupts the whole, the whole use of that building. There's a primary benefit to Water Compass, which is obviously helping you to avoid the waste that's associated with an anomalous use case or a leak. But it goes beyond that to secondary benefits, which are, just think of insurance. You know, you pay a premium for property and casualty insurance on a building. And if you have a leak and you make a claim, typically what happens is your premiums go up and your deductible, you know, goes up as well as part of that. And so that's a, a business operations expense. And so if you can prevent, you know, your rent premiums or your, your insurance premiums from, from escalating based on these events, uh, it just lowers the cost of doing business and improves profitability. Um, we have a partnership actually with an insurance company that does that gives Water Compass to their customers as part of a property and casualty policy while they're building new buildings um, because they know that the biggest chance for loss and the biggest chance for an insurance claim or payout is when the certificate of occupancy to that building nears its completion 
the roof is done, the side wall, the drywall is done, the carpets are in, the paint's on the walls, the furniture has now been installed. Leaks at that point in the construction process can be ruinous. And so they incent their customers and the customer gets a better, more secure building. The, you know, insurer gets a, you know, lower risk to their premium, you know, and uh, in the end, everybody wins. Absolutely. Um, and then let me go back to our PowerPoint slide. Oh, wait, I have a new question. Um, John Bannock, my friend from site one, uh, ask what controllers can be used. John, this is something that is independent of WeatherTrack. This is a fully separate solution. Um, and so it does not tie into the irrigation systems. Correct me if I'm speaking out of turn here, Ben. No, um, the water compass device will attach to the irrigation meter and read it, no matter what irrigation control system is behind it. If it happens to be a weather track system, the water data that's in our cloud can be automatically pushed into the weathertrack.net budget manager interface. And so you can get the benefit of tracking flow without having a traditional flow sensor in place. But if you have a different irrigation control system in place and they don't have flow sensing, this is a way of introducing flow management to that non weather track site to give that customer more benefit. Especially for you irrigation nerds out there that know the ins and outs of installing flow, know that there's a whole bunch of requirements to get flow installed on an existing system, right? We uh, use Flowlink to, to help satisfy some of the more difficult uh, or provide flow solutions on some of the more difficult flow installations. But even then, there are some systems that we can't qualify for traditional irrigation flow management just because of the existing configuration that we inherit. And because this water compass solution is a wireless and b battery powered if there's a meter there we can then start to just watch that information now again this won't tie in like a traditional flow solution this is just water visibility so it won't enact a master valve in the case of a a, a critical issue um it, it doesn't give you the same sort of you, you couldn't use it for opti flow like it doesn't tie in exactly the same way but sometimes watching the gallons is the most important part of flow management. And that's what water compass can provide in an irrigation scenario. So a number of our customers, once they got their domestic meters monitored, um, wanted to push further and understand how water was being used within their building or their campus in sub meter type applications. And so for example, if you're running a commercial laundry, uh, resort property, <clears throat> you might want to know how much water is being consumed by the laundry because the main meter and the water bill isn't going to tell you that. And if you have a restaurant or a food court and you want to separately monitor how much water is going into that, or you have a fountain, a water feature, you have a pool, <clears throat> you have a workout facility, you know, all these are things that you can use to separately monitor. We have a solution that doesn't necessarily require a meter to be present. Rather, we can introduce a new metering point with an ultrasonic solution that clamps on to a water pipe. And so, for example, if you had a three-story building and you wanted to monitor the water at each of the three floors, say a dormitory, you could clamp on one of our um, ultrasonic devices where water entered each of the three floors and sort of total how much water went through those pipes and then compare that with the total water being measured by the meter and do an analysis to say, did the million gallons that I registered on the domestic meter equal the total from the three submetered points? And if the answer is yes, then you've got a truly balanced water audit and you know that you've got a watertight system. But if there's a discrepancy of some kind, either there's another water use case being demanded of that meter, or you may have a leak in distribution lines before it gets to those three submetered points. And that's something that then, you know, begets a whole new set of investigations. Right. So, and Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's good. So uh, a, another use case out of Colorado, one of the big uh, counties out here in the Denver area um, was looking at a, um, a, a complex of, a, 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 it was a um, penitentiary, right? And so there was a lot of different 
ways the water went. As the water came into the complex, it broke off in many different directions. And they use, uh, or they're looking to use wa uh, water compass to really drill down and figure out their water bills are exorbitant. And the only thing that they have to go on is the water bill itself, right? So we see water usage at the meter, but they have no idea what branch of their water system is digesting that water and where, where um, it, if it's going to the employee part of the complex or to the actual detention center um, or the cafeteria, right? They are deploying water compass to provide the analytics to really drill down and see why they're paying such exorbitant bills. In the city of Los Angeles, we had another example of um, the Department of Water and Power flagged a number of meters for excessive use at police stations. And, you know, with the customer in tow, we went to those sites and uh, kind of after looking at them realized that not only was there domestic water flowing into the, the police office and the jail and the things that were there, but they also had vehicle washing stations outside as part of what they provided to the city's municipal services. So fire trucks, police trucks, ambulances, they got washed. And so we actually cut in submeters then to track the amount of water going specifically just to the car washes. And that was an intrusive case where they allowed us to cut in a submeter. We put water compass on those and then tracked water use. We instantly found water running after car wash operations had finished and you know, recycled water valves had been left in an on position and they were funneling down a drain where no one would have heard them or seen them. We literally cut almost 900,000 gallons a month out of the way they operated their car washes and they still wash the same number of cars. So um, a, proven, a proven solution for that application where just no one's there to monitor, no one's there to hear or see, um, but the data picks it up and we measured and verified those uses with the reduction in the water bill on the Department of Water and Power's uh, bill statements. So lots of great testimonials to how this product has delivered value to customers. Yeah, and, and a lot of different use case scenarios. Some of the things that uh, we didn't get into and um, are, are running thin on time to get into, um, but we do have um, visibility into cooling towers, which is a huge part of the, the conversation in my eyes because they use so much water and we do uh, see huge credits with the water compass in use because not only are we measuring how much water goes into the cooling tower, but then how much actually um, gets sent back into the drains or into the sewer system. And so some of our customers are investing in water compass for um, credits on their on their sewer, right? They don't pay for the water, they pay to, to take it away, but they're paid uh, that that value is calculated by how much water is delivered. It's assumed that in case, if you can't prove otherwise, anything that comes into the building goes back down the drain. The three main benefits on the cooling tower application are one, to make sure that a fill valve to the cooling tower itself doesn't remain stuck and therefore water running continuously and wasting into a drain pan. The second is to measure what are called cycles of concentration, which is the ratio between how much water went in and got mixed with the chemicals. And then after it was done cleaning the tower, how much got blown down into the sewer. And the reason you track those cycles of concentration is you wanna reuse those chemicals as often as possible um, before they become ineffective. So you reduce your cost of chemicals. And then the third thing is obviously the amount of water being discharged in the cooling process to the drain that's some of that water is evaporated during the cooling tower process. And so if a customer is only being charged for usage and then the sewer charges on the makeup line, meaning the fill, but they're evaporating 50% of that in the process, they're getting still charged 100% on blowdown. But really, if we submeter the blowdown, we're only gonna help them reduce their sewer costs by half. So, and having multiple towers gives you the ability to compare cycles of concentration across multiple towers, multiple campuses, to determine are towers really running at the optimum of efficiency? Are they really running to the, the spec of the cycle of concentration? Um, and so we've had customers use it in that sense as well. City governments, schools have used that for uh, helping them not only reduce costs, but improve efficiency. That's awesome. Well said, Ben Slick. I could not have explained it 
<laughs> like that. Um, and so we've gone over just a, a handful of examples of how different water compass users are, are um, experiencing success and, and creating water visibility and issue visibility using water compass. I appreciate you guys tuning in for uh, this week's presentation. Uh, I'm sorry to change subjects on you in the last minute, but I, I definitely want to shout out to both Ben Slick and David Taylor, who we had some technical difficulties getting in, but thank you both for making time and for your continued support uh, on this. Since I have you here, we're going to plug our support services. Um, anytime you have questions about weather track or water compass, we have a full support team at the ready to help you. Um, so definitely check out the support services, not only at the um, support team, support at hydropoint.com or 1 800 362 available six days a week with bilingual support. But We've talked in previous sessions about our online resources, the knowledge base that uh, has articles for self-help, uh, tech specs. If you are a salesperson, you want literature, we can get you that on our hydropoint.com resources page. And then of course, the constant dedication to training uh, our company has, and I am involved with all the way, uh, both at our learning center called Learn Upon, our learning management system called Learn Upon, where we provide certified on-demand free training tested um, so that we can ensure that people are walking away with the knowledge that they need to, to be successful with our products. And then uh, last week we dipped into the YouTube channel a little bit. We talked about the decoder videos, but lots of great offerings there if you're looking to learn more. If this, if, this, if this presentation has at all inspired curiosity about Water Compass, feel free to invite Ben to get you connected with myself or someone else that can, you know, help run that down and we'll do what we can to help you and help your customers. Absolutely. Let, let us know if there is anything that we can do to help you look into any projects, whether they are weather track or Water Compass. Uh, we are happy to help any way that we can. And then uh, plug for next week, we are going to dip into some of the things that we're talking about today. Water enhancement projects. What um, <clears throat> my friend Brian found is that once WeatherTrack goes onto a site, it piques his customers' curiosity about water management. And it opens the door for contractors to go in and offer ways to further reduce water bills, um, including mapping, including enhanced irrigation projects, um, high efficiency irrigation stuff that we will get into with Brian next week. So please tune in next week. We'll see you then. In the meantime, thank you for tuning in this week and we appreciate you. Happy inauguration day, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks everybody.